Hey there, folks. Uh, so, in yet another example of Mako finds something on the internet that he knows is going to be shit, but then buys it anyway. Um, I found this on AliExpress and bought it anyway. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I saw the listing, thought it looked neat as heck. Kinda figured it was going to be not so great, but then I went for it anyway. Uh, so what this is, I have already opened it, I have already gone through it a little bit, and I have already modified it because of who I am as a person. Um, but this is what it arrived in and a bubble mailer. Uh, this was in the bubble mailer. Open it up. This sticker was actually on the device, but I started peeling it off. Uh, there's another one on there still that we'll go over in a minute. Um, but... The whole reason I bought this was because I wanted it to look cool, or because I thought it looked cool, and, well, these stickers don't look cool. Um, but anyway, this came off the device, and then I stuck it to the box just so I could show it off. Uh, the printing was a little bit better before I pulled it off, but it got kind of wrinkly. Uh, either way, you can see all these uh, ripped off logos, like, uh, well, I guess GBX Cart RW isn't a logo, uh, but that, all this stuff, certainly is and I have no idea what it even has anything to do with a cart reader, but anyway, this is a clone um, GBX cart RW. Here's what it comes with. You get this uh, white and purple USB cable, which actually looks really cool. I haven't seen one of these. I haven't tested it. Um, I don't, presumably it's a data cable. I mean, nothing to write home about, but Sure, it's fine. Whatever. Not the point. Uh, next up, let's peep the manual and then the device. There's nothing else in here, but here is the manual um, single-sided fold-up thing. Um, nothing too particular. It just says go and use the third-party Flash GBX software maintained by Lester Kuma, um, which is third-party, I guess? I guess it's more like second party at this point because it's not made by Inside Gadgets, but it's also made with, uh, from my understanding, uh, Lesser Kuma and Alex from Inside Gadgets work together pretty heavily on both the firmware for the device and this software. Um, but anyway, it's genuinely nice software if you have a flat uh, GBX cart. But there's the instructions. Um, I'm sure this instructions is lifted from somewhere else, probably from Inside Gadgets, but I haven't seen it before, so I can't say for certain. Either way, let's move on to the last bit of this thing. So here is the device itself. So the reason I bought this, I just thought it looked really cool in the listing. And then it comes with these stupid, horrifying, not even properly aligned stickers um, that kind of ruined the whole look for it. So it's a GBX Cart RW V1.3 clone. Uh, so for those that are not in the loop, uh, the GBX Cart used to be open source. Um, I, I guess the whole thing was open source. The software itself is still open source, but the hardware and the firmware uh, as of V1.4, I think, is um, closed source. Uh, not to mention they've switched to a different MCU. So it's not like you can import the old stuff to the new one. But anyway. Oh, this is coming off much, much smoother than the uh, back sticker. Maybe it wasn't pressed down as uh, firmly. Oh, that came off totally clean, aside from a little bit of schmoo in that corner. Which, try and look that up. Best way to peel up sticker adhesive is with the sticker that you literally removed. Uh, not having a good time of this. That's yeah, okay. We'll get it. Huh? 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 Yeah, buddy. Cool. All right, so that that came off. 
shockingly easily. And just for the sake of completion, I'm gonna save that sticker right there. Uh, so I have already tested this thing. Um, and I already know there's problems with it because of course why wouldn't there be problems with it? Um, it doesn't even read Game Boy Color carts and it does read Game Boy Advance carts, but it can't dump them um, I Wanted to pull the sticker off to physically inspect the thing Unfortunately, this casing is glued together So I'd have to literally break it to get it apart even if there was something I needed to fix but overall the hardware design like I, I genuinely like it. I think this looks cool as heck. Um, I appreciate the old school dip package AT Mega. I don't know. I just think it looks neat. There's like there's like a minimum size to these things. Here's what the actual GBX cart looks like. You can see it's technically a little bit smaller, though the casing on the actual GBX cart makes it a lot lower profile, but then again you have the exposed cart reader versus the covered one, so... Uh, it is what it is. Is that... that's not... Okay. So just... just for comparison... Let me pull this bad boy apart. So this one right here is the 1.4... V1.4 hardware. So it's no longer using an AT Mega microcontroller. Um, of course, I can't get it to catch the light just right. Um, but I'm guessing this is like some microchip something or other um, brand. Obviously, it's a microchip. Whatever, you know what I mean. Um, but either way, this is what a legit GBX cart looks like, just for reference. Uh, this is the V1.4 version so there's an extra button right here uh, this put you hold this button and plug it into USB to put it into bootloader mode to update the firmware otherwise the button which I have broken out on the housing um, serves as a uh, quick option for hot swapping carts you can use the software button in the software itself but I what I, I've used this to flash like 100 carts in a row and having the physical button made things significantly easier so it's here to stay at least for for mine but anyway that's that nice and neat i think it looks cool but i'm genuinely sincerely disappointed that it doesn't really work um so looking at the housing yeah of course it looked better in the pictures of course it did this cutout for the USB port kind of sucks. Uh, the cable that came with my GBX. Um, actually, I don't remember if it came with the GBX or if I bought it from Alex's store. So I, I don't know. I've always used this cable with my GBX, though. It's always attached so that I have a nice USB. I mean, it fits fine. Um, but the cable that I normally have plugged into my PC... Um, kind of it kind of rubs against the side here uh, so you have to kind of insert it at an angle and then shove it home and hope for the best uh, there's also this switch back here which with the sticker was impossible to actuate by by hand um, and without the sticker it's possible but difficult um, this appears to be an on and off switch so since this is based off of the 1.3 hardware, it has automatic voltage switching. Uh, and you can see, now that I have the sticker off, there's LEDs for um, transmit and receive, GBA, and then GB mode. Uh, so you can see what mode it's in based off the LEDs, but it does default to GBA um, instead of GBC. The reason for that is GBA carts are 3.3 volts, and original Game Boy carts are 5 volts. Uh, so even if you have one of these bad boys plugged in and it defaults to GBA, you're not um, Sending 5 volts to a 3.3 volt cart. You're sending 3 volts to a 5 volt cart, but it's better than the opposite Anyway, you can switch it very easily in the software Problem the first Carts don't actually fit in this thing. The housing is too small uh, so when I try shoving this in 
I mean, I, I can send it, and it works, and of course it just peeled up my nice sticker. Nice. Not nice, but rare. Sure. Um, let's get a different test cart. There we go. Like, it fits, but you can see it, it's pushing down on the cart reader in a weird way, and it's kind of lifting off from the back of the board. Like, I, I don't really know what's up with that. Um, I've tried plugging this in with this Game Boy Advance cart, which dumps fine on this GBX, and it detects fine, and it reads fine, but it's only able to dump the first few hundred bytes or so, and then it just fails. Game Boy Color, on the other hand, which also works totally fine on this reader, um, it detects that there's a cartridge inserted, and it can read the header of the cart. That's about it. Uh, you can't dump it because it shows as invalid. Um, for those not aware, let me just grab a Game Boy here. Uh, when you boot up one of these games, see this little Nintendo logo down here? That Nintendo logo is red. Oh, I forgot that it switches to GBA mode when you do that. Uh, that little Nintendo logo is red off of the cart itself. So if I take the game out of here, just insert the empty housing just to trigger GB mode, you see there's no Nintendo logo. Uh, so that's tangent aside, that's how the copy protection worked on these things. Um, courts ruled that you can't actually trademark a Nintendo logo if you're gonna use it for copy protection. So, but either way, your mileage may vary. Um, this thing can't read the Nintendo logo off this cart, which means any data I get off this cart, I can't trust, um, if I can even get data off the cart. So yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't work. I have no idea why. I've physically inspected it. Everything looks like appropriately soldered. I don't see any shorts or anything. It came flashed with the firmware. Um, I don't know, it looks good. It, might just be an exceptionally shitty cart reader, but I can't swap this out without breaking the housing, and that was, like, a, a significant portion of the reason that I bought this. Um, now, funny story, a GBX cart, a legit one, is actually cheaper than these things. Um, I don't... I... <laughs> I don't know why people keep buying them. They're less reliable, more expensive, and support-wise, well, they send you to the same place anyway, except that if you try asking for support on this thing and they f and Lesser Kuma or Alex finds out you're using this and not this, um, they're going to tell you to kick rocks, right? which is totally fair. Absolutely, they're right. They don't support clone hardware, um, and if the software happens to work with it, congratulations. If not, well, they don't support clone hardware. Um, anyway, I don't know. I guess that was just a long, long-winded uh, rehash of a previous video that I've literally already done regarding boxy pixels housings and, and this garbage. Um, this is not boxy pixels shell. I should have kept that at my desk for a quick comparison, but trust me when I say this is a third-party clone and it's garbage. Um, so is this. Every third-party clone that I've seen has been total garbage. And it's such a disappointment because it's it's neat hardware. I have, I have a cart reader collection because of who I am as a person. I have plenty of old cart readers, uh, including a... Japanese uh, damper, it says on the website, but it actually says dumper on the PCB itself. These things are super cool. You can't get them. This is, it is what it is, but it's the only cart reader I have that works on certain carts. Um, Alex actually wrote me custom firmware for one of my GBXs that can read and write the um, retro stage carts. Uh, the Game Boy Color one specifically, but I've since lost that firmware and reinstalled the stock firmware and I don't know. It's not, not worth messing with. Um, oh, I should have pulled this one out. 
for funsies. Okay. So this is what the flash, not flash, uh, GBX cart RW is supposed to look like, if I can get the right screwdriver. This is an old 1.3 version with the uh, older AT Mega CPU. Uh, so this is the exact same CPU used between these two, it's just a totally different package. Um, the hardware between these two is, it's probably identical. Um, Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think the V1.3 hardware was ever open source, but V1.2 was, um, and my understanding is V1.3 is V1.2, except with um, an extra component for automatically switching the voltage. Um, so they probably just reverse engineered that from a retail uh, GBX cart or W. Um, but either way, I don't know. I, I thought it was neat. I got burned. Um, so. I wanted to make this video to warn you guys in case someone's thinking, you know, having similar ideas. Oh yeah, it looks freaking sick. And yeah, I still think it looks freaking cool. And I'm probably not going to put any effort into fixing it because, I mean, I've already got, I've already got plenty of cart readers, so it's not like I need to fix it, you know? It, these are both complete in box. I've got... The retro dumper, like I said, I've got a few Sani cart readers, retro stage, I've got some DIY HDR cart readers, ta-da, I've got some old Joey's, some newer Joey's, I've got, I've got basically everything except for a Joey Jr. at this point, um, so, and even then I have a Gen 3 that's converted to a Jr paid for that upgrade. Um, I lost the screw that goes in this because of who I am as a person. Whatever, I'll find it later. Um, I guess the whole point, if you're interested in a cart reader, like actually genuinely interested, you want to back up your saves, uh, back up your ROMs, that sort of stuff, buy a legit one. Um, I don't care if you buy from Alex or one of his resellers or if you don't even want a GBX cart RW, even though I genuinely think this is the best reader out there um, in terms of price for what you get. Um, there are other readers that have a different focus that might work a little bit better in your use case and so be it. Of course I have a write-up on that stuff too. It is in the wiki that I have linked in my site, linked in the description. Um, just don't buy clones. Uh, especially if you want to actually use it, this is garbage. And I regret spending as much as I did on it, but it is what it is. I, I'm, I'm a content creator at this point, so this video will probably have enough ad revenue over its lifetime to pay for this thing, and well, there we go. It worked out for me, but I'm sure I am not the only one who has bought one of these, so don't, don't join the club. Support original creators and all. Anyway, catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.